Hey everyone, in today's video, this is what I'm going to show you how to do. If I right click this rule, it creates constraints for my bearings. This is actually not as hard as it looks, and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to get started uh, doing these constraints with iLogic. All right, so before I get started, actually, if you could do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, I make iLogic videos weekly, and iLogic is definitely something that makes you stand out on, on the job market, so you don't wanna miss out on these videos. So let's get started by right clicking and pressing add rule and let's call it rule four for the lack of a better name. All right. So before we get started with our iLogic, the first thing we got to do is visualize what we want to do with this code. What we want to do is create constraints. If we go over here to this side, there is no tab that says constraints. And if we go under assemblies and components, there's nothing that says constraints. So that sucks. However, if we go over to this side, and we drop down to this uh, relations, it basically shows you every constraint you've made. And if you right click on any of them and you press capture current state, uh, state, it basically tells you how to make that constraint. So right here, it tells me how to make this constraint. And there you go, you figure out how to write the line of code. Uh, so let, let me break it down for you guys and uh, show you how it actually works. So let me uh, go down to the left hand bearing and I'm gonna right click this and we're going to dissect this uh, on this case uh, scenario. So first off, we, we activate the constraint and then we press a, a type of dots and then we go to add insert. That's what we want to do. So if I was to type constraints, these are all the available options. We can make tangents. We can make transition. We could basically make any constraint. We can make a flash mate uh, angle. Uh, so that's how we activate those. The first line, this is basically telling me uh, or telling the code which uh, how you want to name this constraint so if you look over here uh it automatically names it like insert five insert six uh but the, w the way i named it is called insert left hand bearing and that kind of helps you um it's like the same thing when you rename these uh like right hand br uh, bracket left hand bearing it's the same with it, uh, constraints you don't want to like m uh, get lost of a constraint uh uh, what constraint is it which so it's kind of easy just to name it you know something similar that you could remember on this next line of code it's basically telling me the component occurrence this is the component occurrence the left hand bearing and this is the edge that i want to constrain this next line is basically telling me uh what component what other component con con uh, occurrence it's constraining to so it's constraining to a left hand br uh, bracket and it's uh, constraining to an edge called edge zero and then we have our axis opposed and true and false all right so let me break down what this is uh, you know every time we make a, let's say we wanted to make an insert constraint we we had to select well we want an insert and we could visualize that in code right we we press we tie that dot insert add inserts and then we had to select two edges so when we make an insert let's say we want to insert this edge we select this component occurrence, which is drive shaft. And let's say we wanted to, I guess we wanted to make to this guy right here. Uh, th that won't work, but let's say we want to do that. So when we press that edge, we're actually selecting this component occurrence and we're selecting this edge over here. And then this is the uh, aligned true and false. This is to oppose and this is to align. And, uh, and But over here, since there's only two options, they give you a true and false over uh, when you do it add insert all right so how do we know uh we want to uh let me actually delete this real quick when we constrain it to this bracket like how do we know that we want to do this select this edge and select that edge like how is it possible right how, how can we write that starting from inventor 2020 i log uh, inventor makes it easy to do this if we open up this uh part you will notice that I have some edges called out and it has like edge one, edge zero, and edge two. So if we look back at, at our code, it was calling for edge zero. The way you can name these edges and faces as well is if you right click them and you can assign them a name. So I can assign that name for if we wanted to mate that edge, if we want to make a mate, uh, a mate to mate, a mate constraint on me, uh, we could just assign that a name. So we could call that whatever we want. We would call it whatever. And now we have a uh, geometry called what, whatever. And now I can write code to make a constraint like that. And so I can delete that. So actually, if I rename this, 
let me rename this to let's say edge 1000 and then I go back to my assembly and I run this rule that we just made what do you think is gonna happen it's going to mess up because it doesn't know what edge 0 is it's gonna be like what the hell is edge 0 yep so it says uh, no entity was found with uh, something called name uh, something called edge 0 let me close this I don't know. so if we go back and if we uh, rename it back to edge 0 let's go back and then uh, so we deleted our insert mate so if I, if I run this it's going to insert it and there you go and that is how we can create uh, names for our uh, edges so if you notice we have this floating around so we want to mate it we want to mate it to like to fit that bolt right here uh, this bolt is not what it's supposed to be but uh, we'll ignore that for now so we want to lock this in place and what I want to do is actually I want to make this edge to the half plane of this guy so if I go down here and I look at the origin uh, folders I want to make it to there so let me just actually write the code for, or let me just manually do this Oops. if I select that edge whoops come on I'm going to manually make this uh, constraint and then I'm gonna write the code for this oh wait no that's not what I want to do I want to do this like this guy and then lock it to that plane right there I want to write the code for that so let's go to our rules and then let's drop down this menu over here we're gonna right click this and this is already called the edge one if I go over uh, if I go back to this bearing we will notice that this is actually called edge one and if I didn't have this if I deleted this and uh, if I deleted it and then I pressed that uh, function again let me delete all this oops and I uh, right click constraint add it all it makes it makes me an edge it made me an edge uh, called edge one you know I just deleted it and what the hell it, it made me an edge how's that possible but what it did is um, it checks it to see if there's a, a geometry called edge zero since that was already taken it goes to edge one so what it did it actually made that edge for me uh, when I when I hit uh, what do you call it when I hit this uh, button over here it made that edge for me so that's the line of code to make that constraint so if actually if I delete this and then this let's make it over here and then I run this rule <coughs> it makes that constraint so that's pretty cool uh, just to keep him uh, keep good practices in mind I'm actually going to rename this to left hand bearing just because um, I, I want to know what is what like if I like what if mate 6 was already taken that will cause some sort of issue if mate 6 was already taken and I wrote a, a line of code to make a uh, mate 6 it's gonna mess something up but if I name it to left hand bearing I know that there's only uh, a certain amount of mates that I can make this bearing before it messes up. So that's that. This makes perfect sense uh, for me. So let's uh, let's dissect this guy. So over here, constraints again. Add mate we, because we want to make a mate. The first thing it asks us to do is to give us a name and then uh, type our component occurrence and then select the edge that we want uh, to use. And then the other component occurrence, the left hand bracket, and we're using the XZ plane for the mate. We were using this guy this time. And then over here we have, uh, so the first selection was actually a point. If you remember, uh, we were selecting a point uh, we, when we made that constraint. And then over here, this was, uh, I guess it's called K and O uh, interference. Uh, yeah, so if we, once again, this is very helpful. We can write figure out how to write the code to make our constraints and now we haven't done this guy over here and um, let me run this rule so now our, our mates are messed up now let's try it out 
if I open this up this file, I also have these uh, edges named uh, this guy's edge zero, this guy's edge one. So even though this is messed up right now, if uh, if I run this guy, it fixes it for me. Oh, I have another. Oh yeah, I could get rid of this guy because we rena re renamed it to mate uh, left hand bearing. So there you go. So that guy is locked, and this guy isn't because we only wrote the code for one side. Now, yeah, let's go ahead and look. Yep. So it, it it got messed up. Let's do this. Let me just copy and paste this. And oops, let me bring that over there. I'm gonna rename this to right hand bearing because that's what we want to constrain. And we want to select right hand bearing. We want to make it to the right hand bracket. So let me rename. Let's re rename this one. And then we want to rename this one. So if I kept this as, as left hand bearing, it will get rid of this mate, and then it will just use this mate uh, instead. And um, so we don't want to get rid of that mate. So we have to rename it to re uh, right hand bearing. So let's go ahead and run this. So there you go. Uh, this guy got made it and it's locked in place. We got rid of that design doctor uh, exclamation or hospital sign. And um, so there you go. Uh, hopefully this was useful. Now let me suppress this actually. And let me suppress this guy. And let me unsuppress this guy. So going back to our previous video, if you haven't seen our previous video, I made you, uh, I showed a video on how to make this form. And let's go uh, select one, one and a quarter inch bearing. So first off, it selects or it replaces the bearing, the bearing with the right uh, file, and then it locks it in place. So that's something useful that you know you can use in your code. Uh, because if I didn't have that, uh, it would give me an error basically telling me, um, it would give me an error saying, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I I lost my train of thought right there. I completely lost my train of thought. Anyways, guys, uh, hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. I'm not sure why I got this error over here. And if I run this rule over here, it should fix that. There you go. I don't know what happened there. Uh, but anyways, hopefully this video was helpful. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already for more iLogic-related videos. Talk to you guys later.